Right, hopefully everything is in focus and in shot. Um, I have been very remiss with updates on wearing a suit and things like that, and I think you're going to get a final update tomorrow. Um, but today, what I'm going to do is show you how to get dressed. Now, um, people will be aware that I'm not a good person to talk to with regards to learning how to get dressed, but being that I have been getting dressed in a particular way for the past 45 days, then I can at least show you how I get dressed. Um, and if you're the kind of person who has trouble getting dressed, then you know maybe this can get you some way there. Now, I've not gone so far as to show you how to put on pants and an undershirt. Um, pants and an undershirt are quite important, um, especially if you're wearing a suit, because if you're wearing a suit, you don't want to be washing your trousers um, and everything else too much, or at least not the suit parts of it too much. Um, they're expensive and lots of washing will ruin them. That's the same for jeans as well. Jeans you should only be washing every few months if you're doing it right, if you actually care about your jeans, if you're the kind of person that cares about jeans. Um, but anyway, so we want some tight pants with a bit of leg to them so that they don't move about anywhere, but also so that they're not doing, um, that they're not sort of getting in the way. Uh, where well, you don't think you get loose pants, then they're going to be sort of bunching up everywhere, and you're already going to have your shirt bunching up, up everywhere unless you've got like a perfectly tailored shirt. Um, speaking of tailored shirts, undershirt, you want to have your undershirt, or I like to have my undershirt, um, be a size smaller than your normal t shirt. Okay, so I'm normally a large t shirt, go for a medium undershirt. Um, I like to go for um, a v neck with uh, sleeves on there. Um, some people like to go for the full wife beater. Um, I don't like the wife beater um, purely because when you see somebody with a shirt on, you're going to see that outline there, whereas you're far less likely to see the outline with the v-neck. Um, I'll go v-neck instead of crew just in case I am going to undo the top button. It's going to be slightly less likely that you're going to see the shirt popping out. You're still going to see it, but you know it's going to have a little bit more. It's going to gel a little bit more with with the the, the open me of the of the collar. That's that's the technical term for it, me. Um, but yes, okay, so next up, um, we're gonna put a shirt on. So, I uh, need to grab a shirt. So I've been wearing a suit, which means, uh, I need a shirt with cufflinks. Um, luckily, here's one I prepared earlier. Um, now, before I put this on, I'm gonna put in my bones. So, I showed you these in a previous video, these are the bones that go into the collar. This is what keeps it down. This is why you don't need to have a button down shirt. Now, depending where you get your shirts is whether you will have removable bones. So um, this one, the one I got from M Taylor, both have removable bones. The ones from M Taylor, the bones aren't amazing, um, but they do the job. Uh, Marks and Spencer, uh, the made to measure ones I have, um, those bones um, are Pretty, uh, pretty flimsy, but um, you can't remove them anyway, so there's not much you can do about them. Uh, the bones in my eye tailor shirts might as well be paper, they're completely useless. Um, so, I'm going to do these up. Now, if you've put on a correctly sized shirt, then doing up the top button shouldn't be a problem for you. I've never found it uncomfortable or anything like that. So, that's what we're going to do. Um, you know what, let's make this the ridiculous how-to. How to put on a button, hopefully you're going to be able to see this. We take a button like so, take a button hole here, and we're going to, you see now, if I push back on the placket here, I'm going to, I've got now a side of button that is going to be able to go straight into that hole. So you just lean it in there and push through, and it's easy. Okay, so just in case, you're actually using this as a how-to for how to get dressed. That's what you're going to do down the entire length of it. Um, obviously at the top it's going to be trickier because you can't see it, but you should still be able to do the same motion. You should be, still be able to feel it all the way down. And a similar thing is going to happen with your cufflinks. So, oh, make sure I've got the last one as well. Um, now this shirt is actually a little bit oversized for me, but it's as close as I can get without getting it tailored. Um, and I will have a video um, after Lent explaining the, the whole bit with the tailoring. Now, cufflink people are going to have trouble with. So, 
we have here, and this is even worse because this is a Charles Stewart shirt and they like to put you, they give you two choices for, for the cuff here. Now, in theory, if you've got like a perfectly pressed, sorry, in theory, if you've got a perfectly pressed shirt and everything like that, then you should just be able to just jam a cuff link through there, but that never happens. So what you're gonna want to do is do it bit by bit. So first things first, if you've got a standard T-bar cuff link like this, so that is one of these that will do that. Um, so you want to make sure it's extended, work out where the flat end of it is, line it up with the flat end here, like so. Okay, I'm just gonna push that through. Now you wanna do one bit at a time, so push that one through, like so. And now we've got a second one there, work out where you want to go. I always go for the top one here, but you might not, that's up to you. Work out what looks best on your wrist. And same thing at the back end of the wrist there, find out where that is. You want to go for the same, if you have got a double one, you want to go for the same one on both sides, and then we're gonna be able to push that through there. So we just have four movements there, and now once it's out there, we should be able to just push, and that's now locked in, okay? Now you'll notice that I've got it so that when my hand's like so, that this is the right way up, okay? Because keep in mind, that's, that's how people are going to see it if you're sat somewhere. Maybe you think people are gonna see it a different way, that's up to you. Obviously, if you've got like normal, just regular decorative cufflinks, um, then you're not going to have a problem there because they can go any way around and it'll be absolutely fine. Uh, but if you do have novelty cufflinks, as I like to have, um, you know, use, you may, may as well make, make the most of being able to use novelty cufflinks because people just think that cufflinks are smart in the first place. So as soon as you've got them, you've done, you've done your, your job with being smart. So you may as well go all out on them. Um, but yeah, if you have got novelty cufflinks, you have to think about which way around they're going to be. If people are reading your cufflinks, if people are looking at your cufflinks, are they the right way up? Um, maybe also work out um, if you're going to have um, which wrist you're going to have things on. So for instance, back when I was trying to be a lawyer, I'd have not guilty, guilty, except that I'd do it the other way around. Not guilty, guilty, guilty on the left, not guilty on the right, that kind of thing. Um, if I'm wearing my Pac-Man ones, I've got red ghost on the left because it's a bad man and yellow pac-man on the right because he's a good man in theory i mean yeah um but importantly because it's a red ghost pac-man has to be pointing that way because he's getting away from the ghost okay if there's a blue coast, uh, ghost then you can have him going the other way these are the things that you have to think about when you're getting dressed because nobody will pick you up on them um right so next up i'm going to put on a tie so I have a tie. Um, now there are rules for what to do with a tie. Um, I don't know really any of them. I know that they're meant to go with something, but I don't actually know what go with means. So right, here's how I put on a tie, and hopefully we're going to get this right. Now, there you go. Now I like to line up the short end a little bit lower than the second button that I can see, and that's going to be the actual fourth button normally. So one, two, three, four, okay? And now, my dad always taught me to feel up the, the, the tie, and you're going to feel that there's a little, there's a sort of natural break there somewhere, and that's where you do it. Now, personally, I found that actually that doesn't work in the slightest, but it's a good place to start, and then you can try adjusting it from there if you get it wrong. So, oh, actually, okay. So. I've got fat end on the left, skinny end on the right for myself. Um, in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and I'm going to split this up so that I've got a mirrored image on the other side. Um, hello there. And now hopefully that's going to, you can look at that whichever way makes more, uh, most sense to you. Right, so what I'm actually looking at, I've got fat end on the left, right end, uh, uh, skinny end on the right. I'm gonna cross over the fat over the skinny, okay? And now, I'm gonna pull this back, okay? So now, I've got the seam on the fat end is now poking out to the left, and then I'm gonna pull this over and through the loop at the top, like so. Now you want to try and keep this straight as you go along. Make sure you're not folding up too much inside. 
okay and then we're going to pull that down and it's going to pull back on itself okay so you're going to naturally you're going to want to just keep moving it around make it a fluid motion but you're not going to want to do that you're going to want to pull it back on itself okay so now we've been rolling around just this side just the left side we've been rolling around okay once again because I pulled it back on itself I'm sticking out to the left with the seam for, uh, uh, pointing forwards and now I'm going to roll that around the entire knot like so that's going to cover the whole knot up okay and then I'm not going to go all the way around instead I've now got it point, uh, pointing out to the right with the shiny end forward instead of the seam and I'm going to pull back and go through the middle okay and now that I'm through the middle I should be able to poke that through the top like so and pull down and I'm going to be left with a reasonably even knot okay now I'm not sure if that is a Windsor or anything like that but I've got reasonably close on the ends and more importantly when I undo this I'm just going to be able to pull out the tie um, and that's going to work okay now we've got two parts of this so first of all your tie is probably going to have a little loop there so flip that through there and that is step one of making sure that you don't have your fly your fly your tie flicking about all over the place it may still flick about but at least you won't have one end over one shoulder and one end over the other second part to that is a tie clip now Tie clip is actually unnecessary for what I'm doing today, but I like to put it on anyway, just because it came with the tie. So what are you gonna do? Actually, went collar down, we're not a footballer. Oh, there we go. Lovely. And, right, so your tie clip is going to go between your third and your fourth button, okay? Now, I don't actually want anyone to see my tie clip um, because I've got a waistcoat on and it's bit of tray so I'm just going to go on there if you do want people to see it but well I mean, obviously if you don't have a waistcoat on they're going to see it anyway you can have it higher up if you want to and there we go so that tie clip is now going to keep that in place the wind is not going to blow it about um, you're going to be fine with that and it's going to stop moving over um, I saw the other day I was walking alongside uh, along the south bank and there was a guy whose tie was properly just like under his collar here and he's completely oblivious to it. So this is why we have things like tie clips. And I was like, this one came free with a Marks and Spencer's tie. You know, this, they're not expensive things. You can get expensive ones, but frankly, people are gonna be impressed that you have a tie clip on at all, much like with the cufflinks. You don't have to go extravagant. You don't have to go overboard. Um, when I get novelty cufflinks, I'm, I tend to go to Menkind for them. There are websites where you can get a whole range of novelty cufflinks. Um, you know, go crazy with them. Right, next up, we've now got the shirt on. Um, the next thing we want to do is the trousers. Okay, um, trousers should be easy. Now you'll want to make sure that you've got yourself a way of pressing your trousers so you've got a nice seam going up the middle of them because you're a smart person. Um, now obviously mine aren't great because I've still got Bit of wrinkles going on here. I have a Corby trouser press which I use, which makes life much easier. Um, one leg in one leg, one leg in the other. Now, when you're wearing a suit, you're going to have a lot of gubbins going on here. Um, in all likelihood, you'll have at least one button on the inside. You might have an outside button going on here as well, not on these trousers clearly. Uh, you're also going to have clips here, so you're going to need all of them to go in. So, pushing. All the way around. If your shirt is um, a bit big for you, round the waist, then you're going to want to push this round and make sure it's round the back that it's bunching up, or round the sides if people are going to see you without a jacket on. But if you have got, a, if you are going to have a jacket on, then yeah, just make sure it all pulls round the back and none's the wiser. And drop the button on the inside. Drop the clips. And this is the point where you want to put a belt on, okay? So, I like to wear brown shoes with this particular suit, so I'm gonna have a brown belt. Conveniently, this is a nice reversible belt, you'll get them from any major clothes retailer. So I can just go, boom, spin it round, so that is just pull out, like so, spin round, and now it's a black belt. But Brown belt is what I'm going for. 
push it in through the belt loop on the left and go around. Now I'm thinking women maybe will be doing it the other way around. Keep in mind women's clothing buttons from the other side. Women are used to um, their plackets being on the other side. So um, if you do find that you bought clothing as a man um, and the buttons are all on the wrong side, you have bought women's clothing. Um, way to go for you. Um, nothing wrong with buying women's clothing. As long as it's comfortable and it fits, keep in mind women's clothing will not have taken into account your junk. So it might not be entirely comfortable, but if it is, then you're absolutely fine. Right then, so that's now done up um, enough to make sure my trousers stay up. Um, you don't want your suit trousers dropping down. You don't want them all bunching up at the bottom. Um, ideally, if your trousers are the right length, and I'm not sure you can see it here, but if your trousers are the right length, then um, yeah, they will basically come down to your heel, um, effectively touching the floor. The idea is it won't go any further than that. Um, that will minimize your jack-ups when you're sat down. You want a little bit of jack-up when you're sat down, but not too much. Um, but also means that it's not going to be scraping along the ground. You're going to have the sole of your shoe there that's going to stop it actually hitting the ground. But that does mean that you need a belt or you need braces, you need something that's going to keep everything up. Right, next up, got the trousers on. Now I need to put a waistcoat on. Now it's taken me a while to get to all my stuff because I've been hanging everything on a single hanger, um, which means my jacket has been on top of everything, so I need to get the jacket off of everything to get to the things that are on top. So, waistcoat, very simple, I slip it on like a normal coat. Now, this is where it gets interesting because we're not just going to have the waistcoat here, we're also going to have a bit of decoration on the waistcoat that is a pocket chain. So, my pocket chain is attached to my pocket watch. Um, importantly, we've got to make sure we wind the pocket watch. So, pocket watch is working at the moment. Um, now, this particular one, oh, hello. This particular one is a hunter. It's actually a double hunter because you can do the back as well. But it's a hunter, so if I press the button at the top here, it's going to flick open and I'm going to be able to see how wound it is. Uh, actually, this one's got a decent amount of wind on it at the moment. I'm not sure you're going to be able to see how much wind it has on it. Probably it's not in focus. No, it really isn't. Okay, either way, so I'm just gonna wind that. Now over here, I've got my little, um, ooh, hello. Over here, I've got my spring, and that is the bit that I need to wind. And hang on a sec. There we go. Okay. Gonna push down the ring on it to get it out of the way. Um, and there we go, okay, let's turn around. And that ring, that, those, that spring there, you're gonna see tightening up. Now you don't wanna tighten it too far. Really the important thing is that you don't see it all very loose on there. Uh, as soon as you see that there's no real, well there's not particularly many loose winds on there, you will probably wanna stop, because the last thing you wanna do is have it stop for you. You don't want to overwind your watch. Very difficult to do this from this angle. But yeah, we still got a little bit. Obviously, if you have a battery powered watch, this isn't going to be a problem, but what are you doing with a battery powered pocket watch, honestly? Okay, so there we go, that's done. I'm now going to close this. You press in the button. Oh, wait, that is not the right time. There it is. Okay. You want to press in the button at the top, the release button there, so as not to damage the mechanism, then let go. That's fine. Right then. Then you need to work out where you're going to put your pocket watch. So obviously it's going to go in one of your pockets. Personally, I like to have it in my dominant hand pocket. Okay, so I'm right-handed. So I pop it in there. Um, we'll see in a moment why I do that. Okay, now I'm going to feel up here, make sure my chain isn't twisted on there. Okay, I've gone for a T-bar here, I don't like the clip, uh, the clip really that's for going onto a belt or something like that, so go for a T-bar here. Now, it's up to you how you want the chain to go. Um, if you're a tall person, I'd say you can probably get away 
with you know having it go up quite high um, but people tell me that apparently it works better for me at least going on to a lower button so I go for the lowest button that is still above the pocket so I'm gonna do up the top two buttons and then I'm gonna poke this through from the front so I'm just gonna go through the buttonhole and push the whole thing you want to line it all up and then just pull through from the other side and you're now going to have the chain dangling out behind there okay and what I like to try and do is get the t-bar itself behind the, the other side of the waistcoat okay and now just do the button up like so pull the chain round so it's actually on that side of the button and there we go and then we do up the rest of the buttons now keep in mind that one does not do up the bottom button um, I'm told that this is actually Edward VIII. Um, I was told in, by the lady that sold me a suit in Charles Tyrrell that um, this one came from House of Fraser. It is an Alexandra suit. Um, but yeah, the, the lady that sold me a suit in Charles Tyrrell said it was a Henry VIII thing. It was actually supposedly an Edward VIII thing. To, oh no, wait, that was the suit. This one's George IV. George IV is the one potentially that said, you can't have this because he was too fat. So do up his bottom button, and then everyone else followed suit. Okay. Um, if I'm at work, I like to put my security pass in here. Um, that way, when I come to one of the security checkouts, I'm going to just go boom, and it'll work. Um, I also tend to put my up band in here as well, um, so then I've got some movement on it because you don't want to be putting, you know, all your all your various wristbands and everything like that when you're wearing a suit. You want to be a bit classy about it, um, and then we're just left with the jacket and the jacket should be easy enough that's just going to be jacket so I do it this way lift up behind me one hand in now then I need to reach down with my pinky and grab the um, the, the cuff of my shirt make sure I pull that through um, that becomes especially important if you are doing an overcoat. Um, the overcoat will want to just eat up all your clothing and bunch everything up and it's not fun. So same thing here. Actually it's easier if you just grab that, um, that cuff before you go into it and then push through and there you go. You do want a little bit of cuff coming out the end there and there we go. Now. If I were going for a pocket square, I'm not going for a pocket square at the moment at least because I don't have any way of ironing it because this camera is on my ironing board. Um, then if you were going for a pocket square, what you would want to do is have it complement, I'm told, the shirt. Okay, So I'd be wanting to go something a little bit more purpley, a little bit more lavender on this one. It does not want to match the tie, importantly. Okay, now supposedly you can get away with matching the tie if you've got a bow tie, perhaps it's far away enough from the pocket, um, whatever. Uh, personally, I like to have a, a flat pocket square uh, design. I don't like to have the whole poofy thing going on, at least not in a day-to-day -day suit. Okay, then when we do it up, just the top button. Okay, that one is Edward VIII. Um, and now we're dressed. Okay, now I've not put on my socks and shoes. Um, just because the camera's not in a position to show you how to tie my shoelaces, um, but I will be going for pink socks to go, uh, today to go with the tie. Okay, that is definitely far away enough that you're accenting it rather than just trying to match it. Um, so you're just being consistent with your colouring. Um, and yeah, you'll notice that I didn't get my pants to match. I like to get my pants to match if I can. Um, but really, it's not that important. With a bit of luck, anyone that's seeing you in your pants won't be seeing you in anything else at that point. So, there we go. Um, right, so that's, that's how I get dressed. Um, hopefully that's been enlightening for everybody. Um, and yeah, more videos coming soon, hopefully. Hopefully.